Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, your daily fix of football chat on STV. And the main talking points tonight is that winner bus for Dundee United against Kilmarnock tomorrow. Uh, Lee Griffiths has targeted 40 goals for the season. Do you think he can score the 4-0? And also, uh, Derek McInnes has said Aberdeen are determined to keep up the title challenge with Celtic. Just a few of the talking points as well as looking at all the fixtures across <coughs> all four divisions of the uh, Scottish football. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. Our bootroom guest is former Aberdeen and Celtic striker Joe Miller. So, Ruffy, it comes down to tomorrow where I think the general consensus is Dundee United, even the manager concedes if they mm -hmm. don't win it tomorrow, it's going to be a huge mountain to avoid relegation. Yeah, uh, I think it will be a huge mountain, but the players will know exactly what they've got to do. And uh, sometimes in your professional career, you need to come up with the goods, and tomorrow will be that uh, situation. They have got, obviously, three other fixtures after this, but uh, if Kilmarnock were to win it, you would think 17 points is a massive amount of points to claw back. So they'll be looking at other teams who are on free fall, but they really need to start winning games. Uh, and of course, uh, Mick Sue is looking for every bit of help he can possibly get. Joe Miller, Kyle Canoil coming in from West Ham. Uh, I think that's to try and counter the loss of Ryan McGowan, who's going mm -hmm. to uh, back to China to play football. Yeah, but I don't think, no matter who he brings in, I think it's, it's looking bleak. I think, I think they're already down. I think, you know, between now and the end of the season, he's going to drop points again. So, you know, I think his fate's sealed, really. But uh, it's funny how we're talking about this stage of the season. This is usually the time or the stage of the season where you're de determining who's going to win the league. Uh, sometimes whoever's at the top of the league, they're maybe in the nine or 12 points ahead, but it's pretty tight at the top. But I think yeah, we're discussing who's going to get relegated at this time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, only last Saturday, Joe, you won't be aware of this, only last Saturday, um, Ruffy had Dundee United <coughs> winning 10 games and uh, escaping the playoff as well. The way you looked at them there is exactly <laughs> the way the whole I, panel looked at them. If I was at Dundee United, I'd be looking at the fixtures and I'd be looking at getting mm. to the split within seven points of somebody it's, it's, in that yeah. bottom, on that bottom split because yeah. then you're coming against the teams that you should be expected to beat. And then, I mean, we saw, was it not Rangers or Celtic? Yeah. Where somebody was eight points clear at the split. Mm -hmm. And it's right. either one or the two clawed it back. So mm -hmm. that, that's the whole, but it's up to them to win games. I seem to remember <coughs> Celtic was so far ahead of Aberdeen and Aberdeen caught them in the 80s. That's right. I mean, even, but we're <coughs> talking about a different state. Uh, you know, the other end of the table, you're talking yeah. about a relegation battle. I, mean, I was there when Aberdeen were really struggling and uh, we went to a playoff against them family. Uh, and it's very difficult. Mixley, I think, just left at that time. But it's very difficult to get. You've got to roll the sleeves up, and every game's a battle. It's not about, you know, attractive football. You've just got to battle for every point on the board. You need something to cling on to. You do, and, and certainly a win at the weekend with their game in hand. You know that that's what they've got to do. Yeah, are they escaping? I think they've got a chance, Peter. Honestly, yeah. do I don't think the teams above them that if they go on any kind of run, the mm. the teams above them are so consistent that they're not going to go into free fall either. Yes or no? No, I don't think there's the, the, the characters in the team. To, for, you're, you're, not, you're looking for big team, uh, big game players and leaders on the park. I don't think there's enough of them in the side that's going to get them out of it. Yeah, OK. Um, there you are, Joe. Definitive in the, mm -hmm. the opinion there. Straight to the point, Ruffy. Um, <laughs> we'll see what happens on Saturday. Not that I want Dundee <coughs> to go down, but, it, you know, we've just got to offer an opinion on it. Aberdeen against Dundee. Uh, uh, again, despite the imbalance in the budget, I think... You know, Derek McInnes, I think, has got the short end of the stick mm -hmm. as far as Aberdeen are concerned because they have battled away to try and keep pace with Celtic. Um, yep. And, and maybe, are they getting uh, as much praise as they should? I think they're, you know, I think they're getting a bit of criticism instead of praise, actually, because, uh, you know, considering what's happened to them over the past few years and before Derek's went in, I think, you know, it's, it's night and day. Uh, he's turned them into a winning side and there's a winning mentality. So the expectation levels <coughs> there have went up uh, to try and win games. You know, he's, he's been at the cup finals and, he, uh, you know, he's been on the shirt tail of Celtic for the past couple of seasons now. But uh, I think the fans are getting that wee bit more, you know, impatient to try and get a wee bit further. And it's all down to, you know, getting results and, and keeping in with a challenge uh, every week. But... 
you know, sometimes at this stage of the season, anything can happen, but they've got them in a couple of weeks' time and, you know, it's a big game. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be absolutely huge, Ruffy, if they can mm -hmm. keep the pressure on with a win over Dundee tonight and then suddenly that game on the 3rd of February, Wednesday evening, just is massive. Yeah, but it just shows you, as Joe said, how far they've come. The, the expectations up there now has put added pressure on the players. You know, you can see the players are more determined now to win games, but with that... It goes a pressure that a lot of them haven't handled to win every week because if they don't win every week, they're going to lose Celtic. Uh, OK, uh, Celtic are in action, of course, mm. uh, against St Johnston. Michael O'Halloran back in the squad. Um, uh, and, of course, Tommy Wright now has just entered into... Uh, there seems to be a few managers having a ding-dong with Mark Warburton saying, you know, would you be happy with a paltry offer for one of your star players? I mean, it, it, he's, you know, it's, it's another... If he wasn't arguing with Alan Stubbs, suddenly he's annoyed... Uh, you know, Tommy Wright for the mm -hmm. offer on Michael O'Halloran. Yeah, I think he's right. I mean, I think that, 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 that you know, Michael O'Halloran's just, he's done exceptionally well. Uh, he played fantastically well when he went to Ibrox. And, uh, you know, I think there's a, a, there's a true valuation there. Mm. Um, you know, there's the potential for him to, to do better. And if Rangers pick him up, it's just a policy a couple of hundred thousand, and, you know, they could sell him for millions later on. Uh, but at the same time, I think, you know, St Johnson are doing the right thing, Tommy Wright's doing the right thing. Again, uh, Mark Warburton's maybe went into the transfer window uh, the <coughs> same way he went in for the two players that he got to sign a pre-contract agreement. Um, so mm -hmm. I think, that's, you know, they were undervalued as yeah, well. You know, they were big players for that I, I still think he's, he, he's went into the transfer window with a budget. Yeah. Just say for talking take 500,000. And he said, how many players do I want? I need to... So he's got to use that 500,000 to get two players. And obviously, we see Johnson wanting a large sum of that 500,000. It means he can't get two, so he's got to decide whether he takes one or the other. Well, I don't know. I mean, he doesn't have any de decision to make now because mm. he hasn't got both of them. No. Because, um, I mean, I don't have any problem with Mark Warburton offering that figure because he has a budget. If he thinks he's worth it, then fine. There's no argument. Mm. I mean, um, he's perfectly within his rights to say, this is what I think he's worth. Here's the offer. If you don't want to take it, don't take it. Um, the other um, player that he was in for, uh, Tumani Dia... Uh, uh, I want to pronounce his name mm -hmm. uh, correctly. Yeah, get it right. Uh, Tumani Dia Guranga. <laughs> um, he's joined Leeds United. So he's missed out on the Brentford mm. defender as well. So there you go then. So he might be able to use all his budget for Halloran. Yeah. If he's not got another person on the... But I do think they need somebody, I think. Yeah. I think Hibs have taken a wee... Uh, just a wee one-up on mission. Yeah. yeah, by getting that. And I think the whole of Hibs will be buzzing uh, at the weekend and uh, it could mm -hmm. just give them that wee lift. So I think it doesn't matter what club you're at. You want a lift. You want somebody to walk into the dressing room so the players either know them or don't know them. And it just gives the whole place a lift. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's have a look at the fixtures mm -hmm. uh, for the weekend in the Premiership in Scotland. Of course, there you have it. Aberdeen, Dundee tonight. Celtic, St Johnston, Dundee United, Kilmarnock is just an absolute cracker. Um, Inverness, Cali, Thistle against Partick Thistle and Motherwell against Ross County. And I suppose um, Motherwell will be smarting from that hammering they got from uh, Hearts, Joe. They'll want to bounce back from that one. Yeah, they will. And uh, it's all about getting points on the board. And it's a sp they'll be taking into consideration the split as well. So every point's important to everybody at this stage of the season. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, and the Jags, um, mm -hmm. they've got Thomas Cherney on an extended contract as well, Ruffy off the back of Dylan as well. <coughs> so they're, they're starting to reward players who've really put themselves out there for Alan Archibald. Yeah, I think a lot of the clubs now are, are looking to the future and it seems to be three years, four years. And if you're lucky enough to get a three or a four year contract, it's always a bit of security. But mm -hmm. you're right, the clubs are all identifying players they want for that long term. Mm -hmm. uh, just on, before we get to the break, Joe, uh, Lee Griffiths targeting uh, you know, 40 goals. Is it on the cards in your mind? Oh, I think it's doable. I, I, I thought that at the start of the season he would score a barrel load of goals. Yes. And, uh, you know, if, if he continues this vein of form, then there's no reason why he can't. I mean, the good thing about it, Joe, is that since we started the programme, you've been definitive in your opinion on these things. So, uh, Ruffy and I always like a wee bet with some of the pundits who come mm -hmm. on the programme. Would you be willing to take Ruffy and I out for a meal? We say he won't score 40 goals. I'll to take his both out if he doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, Ruffy, are you happy with that? I'm already getting tanned. <laughs> I bet I phoned the boat. I'm already watching the boat. Right <laughs> yeah, that just, that's a chippy, and there are other good chippies as well. <laughs> you see how I'm covering my tail, Joe? People well, get sorry. miffed if you don't cover yeah. all the chippies. I can't really get involved in another gambling bet. What? Because you know, I'm, I'm 
Two down already. I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to save you. Well, you will get 40. Where are you going to take me if he doesn't? Eh? Or where are we taking you? If he does score 40. Oh, we're taking you out for a, a rip snorter night. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we still to have a Christmas yeah. night out, so calm your jets. We don't mess about. That'll be next Christmas you. day. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be the best place in Glasgow. Yeah, we'll be mm -hmm. taking you. <laughs> we'll be taking you somewhere, Joe. Lots of but, uh, so Joe says forty for Griffiths. What do you think? Um, we'll be back after the break to talk Championship and the other divisions in Scotland. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, and former Aberdeen and Celtic striker Joe Miller is our boot room guest tonight. Don't forget you can join us uh, tomorrow at two o'clock uh, for the Saturday football show. We'll keep you up to date with all the goals as they hit the back of the net. Uh, no shortage of opinion as well. Ruffy, uh, Gordon Smith and Murdo McLeod will be on the panel tomorrow talking you through all the games and uh, we'll be debating some of these stories uh, that hit the back pages of the newspaper in the morning. So, with that in mind, Championship, um, it could be a big weekend Again, Alan Stubbs says he's not worried about a five-point gap. Um, he's fairly confident they can <coughs> peg that back in this race for the title. Yeah, well, he's very optimistic. Uh, again, like Aberdeen, you know, he's got to keep winning. They've got to keep uh, holding on to, and, and trying to get the gap obviously lessened, uh, which would help. But uh, I think Falkirk have got their tails up. I think Falkirk have got a lot, big, big say to, with both when they play Rangers and Hibs. I think they really now... The players believe that uh, with the, the times that they've played both of these sides that they've been gave as good as they got. I agree with you. I think uh, <coughs> even the sign of, of Anthony Stubbs, uh, Stokes is, uh, you know, it's a, a major coup and uh, it's one that will help his title push uh, or his title challenge. So he's just going to have to knuckle down and, and, you know, and it's all about consistency between now and the end of the season. But... You know, I, I do agree with Ruffy. I think uh, Falkirk do have a big part to play in this. Yeah, <clears throat> of course, uh, Kevin Thompson <coughs> could uh, come in. He won't obviously be in the squad for the weekend, but they're closing in on uh, getting him on a deal in a player-coach role. Yeah, I mean, we saw Kevin. I, I just couldn't believe it when uh, they released him uh, the last time. I don't know what went on there, but uh, he certainly, any time we saw them, you know, he was the main man. He, he's got so much ability, so much experience. He just controlled the whole midfield. And with the young midfield players that Hibs have got, you know, he'd be an ideal for just to sit in there and bring them into the game. But I think he might be used sparingly because uh, I think... Young legs is going to help in the run in with this one. Yeah, I couldn't understand why Hibbs let him go, but I can understand why Dundee let him go because they just, mm -hmm. could, you know, on the park, mm -hmm. you could see the influence mm -hmm. he was having, but they couldn't get enough games out of him. No, that's the thing. And I think we, I think you've got to look at players that are experienced a wee bit older. You do have to use them sparingly now. You can't do it week in, week out, especially with the pace of the games just now. And it's particularly in the midfield area, we get, there's a huge demand in, uh, of fitness for players to get up and down the park. But to do that week in, week out and, uh, to a player that's over his 30s, you know, it's a big ass. So you've actually got to manage them properly. Uh, and I th I'm sure Alan Stubbs will, will do that. Uh, but there's no doubt he's got a huge amount of ability there and, and he can be an influence to the younger ones. Yeah, um, here's a look at the uh, championship <coughs> fixtures for the weekend. Of course, we mentioned there, Hibs there at home uh, to Alec Ray's St Mirren and then Livingston at Falkirk, Queen of the South against Alloa, uh, Wraith Rovers at home to Dumbarton and then Morton Rangers on the Monday we're going to discuss uh, shortly. But you touched on uh, Falkirk there, lads. Um, and again, you wouldn't expect them to slip up. We're looking at Hibs and Rangers almost and mm -hmm. thinking, you know, Falkirk. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people I think wrongly are suggesting, or oh, they might fall away, but they just keep on yeah, producing. They're, they're grinding out results, and I think they've just kicked on from the, the, their Scottish Cup campaign and from last season, and I think they're just, you know, they're just quietly going about their business, and then, you know, could we get a surprise this season? Uh, there's a long way to go and a lot of points to be played for, and you know, I think. Uh, you know, they could upset uh, Rangers and Hibs. Yeah. Yep, I, I think Falkirk, they're beginning to be John signed a, an extension to the contract. Yep. I think Peter Houston's identified again, like a lot of the club's players that he wants there for long term. He's signed a contract as well. So everything about the place is uh, on the up, you know, and when you're 
gone for a really, really tight season and you, you want everybody singing for the same hymn sheet. Yeah, and uh, yet another uh, kind of a, just slipped under the radar. Raith Rover's looking now to, to sign Aidan Conley, but, you know, it's a real flip in the policy at Dundee United. Suddenly some of the youngsters that were uh -huh. there all making their way out now. Yeah. You know, Conley, I think, was a surprise because he was tipped for big things. Yeah, he is, and Ray McKinnon's at uh, Raith Rover's has identified that, so... You know, there, there's players who want to stay at that level and, and you know, and, and Ray McKinnon, who's, who's obviously recognised, you know, with Dundee United being a, an ex-club of his as well, that he could maybe poach some players and uh, that can add to his squad and strengthen his squad. So it's a good move there, but, uh, you know, this is going to be a, a great run-in between now and the end of the season for, for all the clubs at the top play. Yeah, uh, Wraith against uh, Dumbarton tomorrow and uh, must uh, just give a mention and pass on our condolences here on the uh, football show to the Dumbarton Chief Executive Gilbert Laurie who sadly passed away. Um, always a friendly face uh, when we were uh, heading there to Dumbarton. Always uh, very helpful uh, whenever we visited the stadium. So condolences to the family and everyone connected with uh, Dumbarton Football Club. As far as uh, the fixtures elsewhere on League One, um, I think the general feeling, Ruffy, is I look at it, <coughs> Fairland have got a tricky one at, uh, up at Peterhead. But I think other than that, you're looking at Air United Albion, at Albion Rovers. Mm -hmm. In a way, now, I think there's a feeling that Dunfermline, are, this is where they're going to make the real push and put a bit of daylight. Yeah, well, I think the daylight is there already. I mean, Air United have done fantastic. A great run they were on. But I think Ian McCall would have known at some stage of the, the season they were going to drop points, and that's the way... Uh, it's panned out, so yeah, I would agree with you. I would think Dunfermline might just kick on now. Yep, um, <clears throat> and of course, Annan <laughs> at our broth, uh, Clyde are away to Montrose and Queen's Park are at Stilling Albion. Some of the key games in uh, League Two as well. Morton Rangers is on the Monday night, uh, Ruffy. So by that time, mm -hmm. uh, Mark Robertson will have a clear picture of what is required. The last time they actually played Morton, I think it was a, a convincing win for Rangers. Yeah, down there it was. I uh, remember it uh, as if it was only yesterday. They were just free-flowing, you know, scoring. But uh, I think Jim Duffy will quietly think that he can give them a game down there. But you're right, it's another if Hibs were to win, you know, it closes the gap, puts the added pressure on the Rangers players to come up with the goods. So that'll be another good time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Matt Warburton... Uh, Obviously, be disappointed he hasn't managed to get uh, a couple of his targets. He may well up the ante uh, as far as uh, Michael O'Halloran is concerned. But where would you strengthen that side? Where do you think he's got his mind? Do you think he, if he's missed out in the, the defender and the striker, is that still the two areas that he has to look? I think he's just got to strengthen in the, the, probably the wider areas, I think, uh, where he could be looking to get service into the strikers. Um, you know, their free flowing style of football that they're playing is. You know, there's not much wrong with it, you could say, you know, because they're at the top of the league, they're, they're, they're doing the right thing. So it's whether you think of it, and if you do think of it, and the player that comes in is <coughs> maybe expecting to play every week, uh, you're going to upset one of the players that's going to have to drop out. But if he's happy with the squad that he's got just now, and you know, you should just stick with it. Yeah, uh, and Wycorn, I mean, he is mm -hmm. the kingpin. I mean, I don't think... Uh, I, I, you just wonder if maybe he's thinking, OK, Kenny Miller's there, uh, I just... I might look for someone just as a bit of cover in case Wycorn picks up an injury. No, I don't think you bring in another striker. I think O'Halloran. It'll be interesting to see. I think O'Halloran playing in that wide position could supply Miller and Wycorn with all the service that they need. <coughs> and also he can score goals as well. But the yeah. good thing about O'Halloran as well, he can move him. He, and he's played that central forward mm -hmm. role himself as well. So yeah. he's been up there and he's done well. Uh, so he, he can he, he can move him about, uh, but he's also effective in the wider areas. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just on the East Kilbride uh, situation, the SFA have clarified that discussions had already taken place prior to uh, the tie with Lothian Thistle, uh, Ruffy, uh, so that East Kilbride had a choice of mm. potentially grounds where they could have actually uh, moved this game to. Hamilton is the choice. It's an astroturf pitch. I can understand uh, the boys thinking on it. You, you just want them to have a... A day to remember. They certainly don't want humiliated. Um, mm -hmm. they, they want to give a good account of themselves, although the gap is vast. Yeah, it is vast. Uh, I, I, I disagree with you a wee bit. I, I don't know why they didn't take it to a bigger ground. Uh, I'm sure the Celtic support would come out for that one. A lot of money uh, to be made as well. Maybe double the crowd. Uh, but 
East Kilbride have got their own thoughts on that one. It would just be interesting to see why they, they went for Hamilton. Yeah, I think it's a realistic size for the appeal of that Scottish Cup tie, to be fair, Joe. Or do you think there's an even greater appeal on a bigger ground? I think that, uh, you know, there is... I think maybe the East Kilbride or, or whoever's decided that, you know, there's maybe a chance that, you know, be playing on the Astros, have to, they've got a wee chance to, to, to make it respectable. But if they go to Celtic Park, then they could be, you know, they could be walked over. Uh, and it's, at the end of the day, sometimes it's not about the finances. It, it's, it's maybe if it's going to be an embarrassment at times, you know. So you've got to think yeah. of it. They'll give themselves a wee chance playing in a, a, an AstroTurf surface as well. Yep, absolutely. Um, of course, uh, I think uh, the kit man at East Kilbride will be getting uh, well used to Ruffy just saying, I need to buy a complete set of new strips. Is that fair after that cup tie? Yeah, uh, I think uh, I would love to be in the, the owner's uh, door when the captain chaps the door to ask what the bonus is for the next round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As players do. Yeah, only As you could come do. up with that, Ruffy. <laughs> think about the bonus, never mind the glamour of swapping shirts. Anyway, thanks to Joe Miller from Ruffy and myself. Join us tomorrow at two if you can.